In this video, we will see how the electrical distribution is modeled by adding switch ports and specifying their parameters and characteristics. So, start a new project and let us first take a look at the parameters of the network concerning the electrical distribution. These consist of the nominal phase-to-phase -phase and phase-to-neutral voltages, the minimum cable cross-sections, the frequency, the permissible touch voltage, etc. All these parameters have default values which can be changed if needed. The help section on the right provides useful information about these parameters, such as where they are used or some typical values. Based on these parameters, a new project already has a basic electrical distribution. Let's see it. On the left, you can see the distribution tree. Each node in the tree represents an element of our electrical distribution, be it a switchboard or sub-switchboard, a power transformer or a generator. Nodes are categorized according to the type of power. The first node under the normal power category is a power supplier. We can think of this as the entry point of the electric power or the electric meter. Just below the power supplier, a three-phase 400 volt switchboard coded main switchboard has been added. Every new switchboard gets a default value of 10 kilowatts for absorbed power, but we can change this estimated value. This estimated value will be used temporarily until circuits are added to the switchboard. Now, let us see how we add sub-switchboards. Right-click on the main switchboard and select Add Switchboard. The switchboard named PL2 is added below the main switchboard. Add one more switchboard. The main switchboard has now two sub-switchboards. Note that both sub-switchboards are marked with a red light. This indicates that the sub-switchboards haven't yet been electrically connected to their parent switchboard. To connect them, select the parent switchboard and click Circuits. We then need to add a circuit for each one of its sub-switchboards. To do this, Simply click this button and two circuits are added. The new circuits get the corresponding switchboard's properties. In the same way, we can add more switchboards or sub-switchboards at whatever depth we want. Under PL2, we can add a sub-switchboard and note again that they are marked with red lights. And to resolve this, we will have to add the connecting circuit to PL2, which will feed PL4. Now, select PL4 and let's try some tweaks. Click Incomer and change the switchboard to single phase. Its power remains at 10 kilowatts, but the cable changes to 25 square millimeters. If we add another sub-switchboard, the new switchboard's phases will be restricted to one phase. If we then come back to PL4 and change it to three phase, then when we return to PL5, we can change it to three phase. Let's have a closer look at the incomer cable. The default incomer cable is an H07V-U cable, which is a typical single core cable used in residential installations. However, if desired, we can change it by clicking the Cable Type and Routing button. In this dialog, select the cable type and the number of cores, 5 or 4. Here we see the normal maximum current for each cable. Note that these values change if we change the cable's installation method. Here, we specify parameters that affect the correction factors that will be multiplied with IR to produce IZ. Then click OK. Thus, the cable changed to 5 core 4 square millimeters cross section. Now, let's see what happens if we change the kilowatts of the most distant switchboard. If we increase the absorbed power of PL5, then the absorbed power of its parent and the parent's parent increase. To calculate the parent switchboard's absorbed power, its spare factor is taken into account. So the additional 1 kilowatt added to PL5 is multiplied by 0 
Note that if we keep increasing the absorbed power to the point where the cable's limits are exceeded, then the cable will change and this change will be reflected to all pattern switchboards.